been deaf since I was two. And I kept it a secret because I've seen it as a weakness and I had to if I wanted to get to the top. I just thousands of people in the crowd, you're doing a line out call to win the World Cup, and you miss a line out call and you don't hear it. The difference between winning and losing, isn't it? And I don't think anyone or any coach would take that gamble. I can't hear su fu ka wa Crowded room is very hard, so I lit read, but I didn't know any different as a kid. Never told anyone. So I'd never get to the top. I can I can just see it. It never got out until I just thought, well, at the end of the day, I wear my hearing aids now and I wear my pride. I can hear the leaves whistling. I can hear the birds singing. I'm the person that wanted to prove everyone wrong that I can get to the top. You can succeed. Even if with a disability these days, you can get to the top. And I learned very quickly that you're not on your own. You're with a squad. You've got to trust in each other and believe and be accountable for your actions and learn your role in the team. I went to a school that did not play rugby. I played rugby on a Sunday morning to get rid of my frustrations and emotions. It taught me discipline, it taught me camaraderie, it taught me togetherness, and there's no iron team. We work together towards a common goal. I needed that as a child. I'm just glued to rugby. I watch any rugby. I love the camaraderie, I love the feeling, I love the fans. You may smash each other up during the game and then after it, can I buy you a drink, have a pint? My hero was Brian Moore. I played for Bristol against Harlequins and I'm playing against Brian Moore and I got into the bar after. I went up to Brian and said, Brian, you're my hero. What have I got to do to be uh, as good as you and play for England? He told me to go away. And I was devastated, absolutely gutted. Anyway, I rose above that. Following year, I'm playing against Brian again. I'm faster, fitter, stronger. I remember Brian saying to me, Regan, do you know who I am? I'm Brian Moore and I got 64 caps for England. I said, I know you are, Brian, but you ain't going to get 65. And it never got 65 because I was driven with that. I just, I always need that poke to want to prove people wrong and know that I can do it. And that was my drive. Well, I've been told that Mark thought of me as a role model when he was growing up, which is very flattering. I don't think you ever take that into account when you're playing against someone. It's just the battle at the time. And being in the front row, it is literally head to head and you just have to get on with it. This is the first time I've been informed that Mal had a hearing problem. It certainly wasn't apparent to me. Perhaps that's why he never listened to anything I said, which is you know, enough. If, if that was a serious problem, then he did incredibly well to hide it. It isn't really for me to say who is a worthy and non-worthy successor. All you have to look at are the statistics. I'm 46 caps for England. is a tremendous achievement. Wearing a rose is everything. No one ever owns that shirt. You just there, you're a custodian of that England jersey and you gotta perform and do your best. Not just for yourself, family, friends, people that put you in that position to get you there. I just wanted to play rugby. You look back now and think that people can get paid for running around with a rugby ball with your mates. I just wanted to get to the top and get to the far pinnacle of the rugby career you could possibly get to. Just give it my heart and soul and everything I possibly could give. Look back with great pride.